Are you still in communication with your former teammates and just, you know, friends from when you were playing in the league? Yeah, I mean, me and John still talk, Oak and I still talk, Pat and I talk, you know, uh, Charles Smith is a good friend. Anybody you see Greg Anthony once in the blue when, when he's around, but, you know, right now I'm, I'm focused on this insurance thing and, you know, and why I got into it was because, you know, essentially basketball players, you know, when I first learned about a certain product that I thought would be great for NBA players, I was like, man, maybe I can get in front of the NBA or get in front of, you know, some of these teams and help these guys to where they stopped making them corny documentaries like 30, 30 broke and all that. I didn't, I didn't like that at all. I felt that it was more exploitive than just, you know, what did you learn from it? Mm -hmm. The only thing you learned from it was a lot of people went broke. Ooh, okay. So what now? You know, that's like me sitting there saying, well, you know, uh, you rich. I mean, you're broke. The guy that grew up over here is rich. How does that, how does that meet in the middle? How does that help you get there or help him help you? You know, they, they didn't have none of that in there to me. So if I can, you know, continue doing what I'm doing in insurance and the education part, you know, and helping people, you know, I call myself a lifestyle manager, helping people maintain their lifestyle and they see it there and start teaching others, then I would feel good about that. Maybe that could be a program. Do you ever see yourself coaching? Oh, I would, I would love to coach, but they got to be willing to, they got to be willing to go through it. You know, I'm not gonna be, <laughs> I'm not gonna be the one sitting there and uh, anything they want to hear is what they're gonna hear. They're gonna hear what it is. They're gonna hear the truth. You know, that's how I coach my kids. You know, and I don't know if you've seen the article and, you know, first time he played, I told my son he sucked. You know, because he did, and uh, he took the challenge and he said he's, you know, he decided to get better. You know, that's what these, that's what's changed. You say that now, somebody's crying and upset. Mm -hmm. You say it back then, and, and you've seen players. You used to see Jordan get in Pippen's face and Magic get in his team's face. And, you know, we used to get in each other's face. And people just, they responded well. Now it's, you know, who you talking to? And, you know, it's, it's a lot of prima donna stuff going on. So you think that the league has gotten soft? Oh, it's definitely gotten soft. I mean, look at the rules. I mean, you know, everybody, it's funny that, you know, without giving reverence to any player. It's a, almost an insult to say, well, I, I believe LeBron and this and that and Jordan this and that because it's two basketball. It's two different basketball eras. Um, I'm not saying LeBron wouldn't have been a good player in the league, but, I mean, who's he playing against? I mean, think about it. who Who has size in the league as far as width and all that? Dwight Howard and who else? Evans? Uh, when I played, That's, it was somebody yeah, on every so team. K, Detlef, O, Carl Malone, myself. I mean, it was all over the place. You know, everybody had some enforcers. Everybody had weight. You knew you was going to get hit. You know, I mean, I've watched a lot of games, and, I mean, every move he does is a highlight. People were watching all the <laughs> other things. Like, wow, he really can get up high. I mean, well, they beat up on Blake Griffin a lot. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, uh, let Blake run down the middle a few times full speed. They're not going to do it. They're not going to do that. You know, a lot of people, when you, when you don't play big, like I said, LeBron is a talented player. He's smart, and he knows that they're going to get out of his way. If Blake came down and was um, forceful like that and, and, and really took the game to another level, believe me, this league, the way they are, they'll get out of his way. They'll get out of his way. Right. Two more questions for you. Uh -huh. First, there's actually a story that I heard that LL Cool J used to have these parties and you would, from time to time, be like the security bouncer. If anybody got in hand, you, you kicked them out the party. Is, is, this, is there any truth to that story? I wasn't so much the bouncer, but L.O. was my dude. And I remember, you know, a couple of times, you know, just like anything else, it's a lot of hate. So, you know, L.O. was, you know, cordial enough to let guys get on the mic and do their little freestyle. You know, and L.L. was who he was at that time. And, and he'll get on, and, and you can see the difference professionally and you know, I, I wouldn't say amateur, but guys working their way up, even though there was talent there. And then somebody, you know, want to say little slick comments or whatever. And I just thought it was real disrespectful. So it was time to leave. <laughs> See, the enforcer is, is even the enforcer off the court, ladies and gentlemen.